Okay, okay. Whoop. Hello, hey. And whoop. I forgot that was on full. Whoopee. Yoink. So today, I was asked. Uh, well, actually, it wasn't today. It was. What, I think two weeks ago. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, someone asked. Why don't you do a collection video for your DS games? Now, anyone who's been a long time subscriber of my channel, uh, many, many really old videos were showing off complete collection, like not complete as in every game in the system, but I mean my, at the time, every game I owned for certain systems and that. And um, I have never truly finished showing off every single game. and. The DS was one of them I never did. Uh, the last one I did, I believe, was my PC games, which wasn't too big. So, um, I guess apparently there's interest to see some DS titles that I have. Um, so, without further ado, let's get on, because this is going to be a very long video with lots of random talking. So, I hope you and your pop head. So, let's, let's quickly just start off with all the games that have no cases. Very small selection now. These are Neo Geo Pocket cases, just in, ooh, in case you're wondering. So, now this I got with a few other games, so it was kind of a, more of a group deal, but uh, Cooking Mama. Yeah, we'll just ignore that one. Now, one of the games I did want that came with it was uh, Metroid Pinball. Focus. Uh, recent games I uh, got from a GameStop deal when they were getting away of a whole bunch of DS games was the uh, Valkyrie Profile game that was on the Nintendo DS. The um, if you can read the subtitle from being so freaking ass small. I can't read that. It's so freaking small. Uh, a Konami game called Wildway. Dragon Ball Z Attack of the Saiyans, which I just recently finished and getting the rest of those up on YouTube on my Let's Play channel. Pokemon Dash, which was a horrible hoeing out of the Pokemon license uh, in a tech demo gone wrong. Yeah. Almost done here with the ones without cases. This is one I'm really sad I don't have a case. The Wizard of Oz Beyond the Yo Brick Road, which I also did a Let's Play of. A very primitive one with a camera. And then, of course, uh, what is probably the most common DS card, uh, Mario 64 on the DS, a.k.a. Uh, Super Mario uh, DS and stuff. Does it have 64? Yes, it does. It has Super Mario 64 DS, so... Still has 64. I couldn't remember if it did or not. That was a long fucking time ago. So anyway, that's all the stuff without cases. So let's mosey along. We got lots and lots of stuff. Oh boy, lots of freaking stuff. So let's just grab and start partaking. One of the newest DS games I got was from the Nintendo Club, the Game and Watch Collection Volume Two, which has the um, Parachute and Octopus and the Parachute Octopus combination game. I uh, haven't tried that one yet. Must be weird. Final Fantasy, uh, Final Fantasy, The Four Warriors of Light. Um, I've actually been considering this for a new Let's Play. Um, I never finished it. I got, I wouldn't say too far. I believe I got to where like one of the characters turned into a cat with it. Uh, we into Historia, another game I never finished. Awesome game though. I really, with my new DS recording, this is also something I've eagerly been considering to do a Let's Play of. Oh, and also for the hell of it, I'm also throwing in 3DS titles into this. Now, of course, there's the Nini Kuni, which many people have pointed out. Uh, the cover for uh, the big box, which comes with Nini Kuni. Because you, of course, have the book that is required to actually play the game. Because some of the first pages are spells. Which all, well, again, require to play the game. It's a very nice book. Very nice art. So it's a shame it's all in Japanese. Though uh, the limited edition of the PS3 version did get an English translation of it. 
Uh, that is a very nice item to have. Again, another game I've been considering doing a Let's Play of. Uh, Niikuni is a very, very awesome game. Moving on. Pokemon Poil. I don't know. I'm born to have Pokemon. I couldn't get in the pool. I've been considering doing it as a Let's Play because I haven't played Pokemon in a long time. That so I have been kind of considering doing a Let's Play of. But eh, 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 eh. I got my time bid here covered in DS games. This might tickle a little bit. Let's get some more moved up here. Let's we'll start with the ones in the back. Animal Crossing Wild World. Uh, I played a decent amount of time of this. Um, I'm not a huge Animal Crossing person. I'm not usually into a whole lot of sim, uh, sim games, but uh, this one was pretty good. It had online interaction with people. Uh, that made it a lot more interesting, in my opinion. Let me move that a little. Yeah. Now here's one I got cheap, but I never really played a lot of. Uh, Jack Hunter Detective Chronicles. Now, if I remember correctly, uh, these were originally cell phone games. Uh, they were a visual novel, point-click kind of mystery thing. Uh, the thing, though, is if I remember correctly, this is the butchered version. There's another version which has uh, better content, if I remember correctly. Um, kind of weird. Uh, it was published by Axis Games in uh, America. Very odd. Uh, I think the other version was uh, published by uh, Genji, the people... Uh, Behind Class of Heroes 2. Uh, under <laughs> Trauma Center and a Knife. Um, this, this was a very interesting game. Uh, I know this game was just very interesting. <laughs> um, I, I'd say it was one of the first games I think that really made a unique use of the DS, in my opinion. Doing surgery on the touch screen and stuff, and using special powers to slow time down as a wacko virus is killing people. Uh, very interesting game. I never got to finish the first game. It's very hard. I mean, I got really freaking far. It's ridiculous where I'm at. It's so precise needed at the time. Uh, many of the sequels would become much easier with uh, difficulty choosing in that. But this is a very hard entry, but it's very fun and satisfying to pass the stages. Now, here's one I haven't actually got any time to ever try. And where is your box, actually? It's probably up there. I usually keep all the boxes up there. Uh, this is a spiritual sequel to a uh, PS1 title, which is incredibly rare and was published by Atlas. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. I don't own it. I've never had any luck in getting it. Uh, this is a very interesting game. Uh, it's basically a... Uh, air combat game uh, with uh, some RPG elements I believe but again like I said I haven't personally played it yet um, I just got I never got around to it uh, I've actually also been considering this as a let's play too um, it's always been very really interesting I just never really got around to it quite yet oh here's a really bizarre game this game is interesting in a psychological, like, if you want something kind of Silent Hillish for your DS, there you go. Right there. Go. This game is pretty fucked up with a weird ending and shit. It even had a sequel. Um, I never finished this. Um, it's actually uh, pretty decently difficult. Um, and it actually is pretty intense in the fucking horror elements. Uh... <laughs> I did see the, uh, this is Doom 3 meets Silent Hill, be afraid. Uh, this is a very interesting game to look up if you're really looking for something very Silent Hillish on your DS. Uh, another game I haven't got to ever do, I have experience with other entries of the Mysterious Dungeon, but I've never played any of the Pokemon Mysterious Dungeons, and this is the, uh, Explorers of Darkness. Um, I saw a uh, special edition of this with a wide box and a book uh, with it for like $19. So I was like, oh, sure, why not? Uh, I believe it's the only uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game I have, uh, if I remember correctly. I have a lot of experience with other Mystery Dungeon games, but um, I just don't really have any with uh, the Pokemon franchise. Now, here's a, a really interesting arcade ish game that's really cheap these days. Touch of the Dead. Um, it is 
very simplistic, but uh, it's also a pretty hard arcade game. Um, its story is very generic, though. Um, if you see it for a few bucks, it's not uh, bad if you're just looking for a very random arcade experience. Ah, Advance Wars Dual Strike. The only main entry of the Advance Wars I haven't finished yet. I finished 1 and 2. I believe I finished 2. I think I did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I finished 1 and 2. Dual Strike, I'm pretty sure I haven't finished yet. I think I got to where you're controlling the uh, guy with the uh, planes and that. Got stuck there. Uh, very good game. I like the Advance Wars series. It's a very fun, strategic game. If I remember correctly, that's the people who made Fire Emblem, so hey, kick ass. Let's go with it. More, more, more. We got Dragon Quest V. Do we need to say more? Kick ass! Then Children of Mana. I don't know. Children of Mana just did not satisfy my... I used to be a big Mana fan. I really like uh, the third and fourth game. Then Children of Mana, the PS2. I actually don't own the PS2 game. Um, so I don't know if it's bad, but uh, since Children of Mana's story is connected to it, I don't know what to really say. Final Fantasy III! Basically the only real number entry I haven't finished aside from 13 2. And that does include 11, ex uh, except for its newest expansion that just came out. Um, I just barely played that. Um, this is also something I'm considering doing. Oh, let's play on. Oh, we might hear that a whole lot, won't we? Final Fantasy IV for the DS. Um, I couldn't really get into the DS version. Um, it's something I've been considering doing the Let's Play of 2, to, because it, it's supposed to have a lot of different boss strategies from all the original versions of Final Fantasy 4 and since the PSP After Years game uh, uses the additional elements of it uh, I thought about that as a interesting way to play that with the new elements and then uh, do the After Years um, if I can ever find a decent price 2,000 3,000 model PSP but to be truthful the weird chippy graphics just didn't really rub me the right way Foot Mission! The original Foot Mission for the Super Nintendo on the DS, which has a new, complete new campaign in it. Um, it's really a shame that it didn't sell very well. Really a shame. I mean, really, it is. Okay, here's something bizarre. I know people are probably waiting for some of the bizarre entries to put torn up. Here's the first real entry. You're probably like, what the? This is, if I remember correctly, Tinkle's Woozy Land Whoopie Land Adventure. If I remember correctly, that was the title. Um, this actually came out in Europe about a year later after I imported this in English. No, no, I just... <laughs> but it would be much easier to play this in English than Japanese. Um... I've actually even considered trying to get a PAL version of the game, actually. Um, especially since I can do uh, Let's Plays uh, with DS games with better quality. That would make this a very interesting uh, thing to Let's Play, that's for sure. Um, it plays nothing like a Zelda game. Uh, literally, it does not play like a Zelda game. It's this complete bizarre system that involves money as your life and a random fighting system. Uh, it's very bizarre. If you're looking for a Zelda clone, you're not going to find it. You're going to find something very strange. Though. If you live in the PAL territories, you can get an English version, like I said. If you... And, well... There you go. If you want to play that in English, get the PAL version. Now here is, uh, if I never quote it, this was a level 5 game, wasn't it? I think it was. I'm pretty, no, this was a Mistwalker game. Get that dumbness out of your head. This was an import of a Mistwalker game for the DS. Um, I've actually never played this one yet. Um, I wanted to get it because I was fearful it might become whale. I was originally waiting for an American announcement and it was just real shame there never was one. So I got a copy because I feared it might become whale of that. Because Miss Walker was still very new. 
Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon, a DS version of the first Fire Emblem game. Uh, criticism with a lot of graphic, uh, but uh, it didn't bother me too much. I mean, it's most of the Fire Emblem games have been 2D for majority of its life. So, I mean, it's maybe not the greatest 2D in the world, but eh. Dragon Quest 6! Or 4, or 20, or 8. No, I mean Dragon Quest 4. <laughs> Don't, don't get me wrong, we're going to get a lot of Dragon Quests in here. Dragon Quest 4, there'll be 6, there'll be 6, wait. Now, Final Fantasy 12 Revenant Wings. A game I always forget. Mm, yes, I haven't been this, so I guess since it does have a number, it does kind of count there with the Final Fantasy 13 to Final Fantasy 11's newest expansion and Final Fantasy 3 in the new Markle winning. Never played it. I actually bought this from Aaron. Um, it used the system that um, the last Mana game, uh, I can't remember what it was called. Um, it had a tactic real time thing that kind of was like Lost Magic. A little. Just a little. And um, that didn't do well. I can't remember what it was called. But it was the last game in the Mana series. Uh, currently. Um, this used that system and wasn't considered any real battle. Back to more imports, Tales of Tempest. Um, I played very little of it. Um, it's sadly not too easy to play because it doesn't have icons with items, which is a bit of a shame. Now, Jump Ultimate Stars. Fun online mode. I wonder if it actually even still uh, has online, really. Um, it was very fun to play this game. If you don't know what the hell this is, it's basically imagine Super Smash Brothers with Sean Jump characters. You'll have Ultimate Muscle, Nuatu, One Piece, uh, Shaman King, uh, Dragon Ball Z, um, all kinds of freaking characters, even characters you probably have never heard of. I mean, uh, you know, I'll try to take a kind of close-up. You can probably recognize several characters just around the title there. There's Yusuke. Oh, there's a guy from Hunter x Hunter down there. Uh, this is a very excellent uh, multiplayer game. Um, I don't know if online's still around on the game. It's a pretty old game, uh, considering the DS years. Um, if it still does, um, still good. Um, if it doesn't, then, you know, it kind of kills the appeal, though, unless you have friends with it. And, you know, it being an import title, I'm sure not all your friends are going to have it, you know? Oh, here's one of my first DS titles. Oh. I think this was the first used DS title I got. Nano Stray. Great example of how the controls are horrible. How to not make your fucking control scheme on a fucking DS. Uh, it's a, uh, sh um, a schmuck game, you know, shooting. Bah, 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 bah. Um, I don't remember exactly what was bad about the controls, but um, it was just not good. Not good at all. Get a few more titles over here. Oh, that one's even still. Oh, I don't know. Why that sealed. So, another import. Um, this is a very commonly overlooked Chocobo title. Um, if I remember correctly, it's uh, Choc uh, Chocobo Story Course of the Witch or something like that. Something to do with Witch. Um, this. I don't know what they're doing with the Chocobo franchise anymore. You know, you have the Magic Dungeon series, then you have a new reboot Magic Dungeon series that has no story connection with it. Then you had the uh, full storybook thing, and then you got this, which seems to have no connection to any of them. It's just confusing. It's really confusing and all big freaking mess. Was an evil deadly silence. Um, not actually too bad of a version of Resident Evil 1. Um, if you're not a big graphic vitality person, which it's Resident Evil, why the fuck would you be? Um, it's a pretty nice version to play, actually. Um, especially if you have friends with it. It has a multiplayer mode, which I've never got the experience, which is really sad, because I've always wanted to try that. Uh, Locke's Quest, which was a very popular and world-winning game during its year it came out. It's, a uh, kind of a, 
I'd say it's kind of a hybrid of a tower defense action game, kinda. I've never uh, really played it. I actually got this from Aaron. He finished it. He wanted to get rid of it. I told him I was interested in it. Uh, something I've also been considering doing a Let's Play of too. Told you we'd hear that a lot. A sealed copy of Pokemon? Was this black? No, this is white. Sealed version of White 2. I got on uh, Black Friday if anyone happens whenever that. Uh, obviously, being sealed, kind of hard, hard to play, you know. <laughs> uh, Jump Superstars. Um, I don't remember if Ultimate or this one was the first one. Uh, what, I think Ultimate the sequel and this was the original, I think. But I could be wrong. Pretty much the same stuff. They both have online modes. Dragon Quest VI, not technically my favorite in the Dragon Quest series, to be honest. Uh, but to be honest, it's, it's only higher than Dragon Quest IX. Maybe we play in the DS game. Uh, it's the Super Nintendo version might uh, make me feel more bell with it. But uh, Magical Star Sign. Now this, this is very weird that we got this. And I'll show you why that's weird. I have to get out of here. It's very weird because of this game. It's a sequel to a Game Boy Advance game. That we never got. But we got the DS sequel. It's very odd. Um, it was uh, made by the original creators of the Mana series, if I remember correctly. Uh, which uh, formed uh, the... Uh, what, what the hell were they called? Uh, uh, is there a company logo? Uh, Brownie Brown. Yeah. Um, it has a elemental magic system that I never got really far in this. Um, it's not because it's bad, it's never grabbed my interest long enough, sadly. But it was interesting, though. Something I think is only doing. Yeah, yeah, let's play. Let's just say 50% so let's play. Now that there's a lot more footage captured. Something I'm probably not considering to do a Let's Play. That might be well. Now I might get some slack for this. The be fair, I'm a fan of Kingdom Hearts games, but most of the original. Kingdom Hearts 1, Chain of Memories, and Kingdom Hearts 2. Everything after, I don't really like too much. Now to be fair, I haven't played the second DS title, and I haven't played any of the PSP titles. And I think there's only one, but uh, just in case there were more than one PSP titles. Well. And the fourth DS title just. Uh, the, uh, what was it? Uh, 358 slash two days. What the fuck's up with that title? Um, this and Crisis Call are a very unique type of RPG I like to call a box RPG. Where you're locked in a room. You talk to a few NPCs, and you'd be like, I want to go do mission one. Go do mission one, do that. You come back to the box room, do crap here, and do that again, again, again. But at least Crisis Core had made it feel like there was a lot more freedom in that aspect. This makes me feel like I am really stuck in a fucking box. Um, sorry. Not, not a really big fan of that. I, <laughs> I'm sure the story is fine. Just... I just can't wrap around my head in the kind of trapped box. Glory of Hercules. Um, I think this is like, what, the seventh entry in the series? Um, and I'm pretty sure this is the first time any of the entries of the series has ever came to America. Um, interestingly about our version is uh, it came with improvements over the Japanese copy. Um, they made combat a little faster on that since uh, Japanese reviewers complained that it was a bit slow. So uh, we got a slightly improved version. Uh, Wonder of Swords, which I think is actually kind of rare to get these days, um, was a interesting uh, strategy game. I recommend picking it up if you can get it for a decent price. Oh, the buggy adventures of Harvest Moon DS. Buggy, buggy, buggy. There's several glitches and problems in this game. I mean, it has the normal Harvest Moon fare, but there are a few issues with it. But that's more like in-game stuff when you're trying to get, like, all the sprites and shit. The Legend of Xanadu, the Phantom Hourglass. Um, 
Again, this is actually Aliens. Uh, he was going to get away with it, and I got it. No, actually, now that I think about it, I think he gave it to me as a birthday gift, because I never got fan mail glass. And I can't say I ever really got into it. Um, the touch screen controls, they really kind of bothered me. I, I don't know. Maybe I'll give it another try as a Let's Play, maybe. Yeah, yeah, and here's another contender for Let's Play, Dragon Quest Monsters 2. Something that a lot of people did not think America was going to get. Very nice. A lot of people were pissed it wasn't the uh, better version that had more monsters. I'd say at least we got it. I understand why you're a little disappointed, but it shouldn't be like, well, I want more people. Trace Memory, something uh, the RPG, with remote RPGs, talked about quite recently. Um, I played a good bit of this game. Um, it's pretty simple, uh, visual novel, point click kind of a fail. I would say it's too special. It was very early DS title, so nah. Grab some more titles over here. Oh, so much stuff to go through. Hotel Dusk, Room 215. Uh, this has a sequel. Um, it was only available in Japan and PAL. Um, sadly, I hold that it became kind of rare, which is a shame. I really need to look into that. I really like to get that. Uh, this is a very interesting title. Woo! Don't drop everything. Maybe I should not have a handful of crap. Um, this is a very interesting title because uh, you hold the DS literally like a book while playing it instead of you know like you would normally where it's up down you actually hold it side to side like a book um very interesting and it's the only game i've ever seen uh like that but uh that's a very visual novel mystery game now uh alien code i've never played this i got cheap on sale and i've never played it um it's some kind of... Oh, fuck. I'm not having a lot of luck killing this. It's the same when I drop, too. Uh, it's some kind of action game, uh, but I've never really played it. I don't really know if it's any good, so I can't really say much. Oh, wow. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. The wing of Bates. Oh, I was so excited to see Crystal Chronicles sequels. And then I was disappointed that none of them except for Echoes of Time was the only one to be semi-interesting in my opinion. The multiplayer, the multiplayer just always seemed to be destroyed. Because it was its own separate mode or we fighting bosses but not going through the story. And Wing of Fates is a very story oriented entry in the Crystal Chronicles. So if you want a more story focused, there you go. If you want more fun gameplay with uh, co-op, you're not going to find it in that. Uh, it's its own mode. It's not through the normal story progression. So, moving on. Dark Spiral. Dark Spiral was not liked very much in America. A lot of people thought Atlas was trying to uh, go. It's like, hey, Etna Odyssey people. Look, here's another one. Uh, while we're doing the other one, get this one. Uh, it will tie you over. Uh, who knows what the hell they were doing. Uh, if you're looking for something that is very close to wizardry in a modern, you're not going to get any better than the Dark Spiral. This is very close in deal to wizardry style of evil. I got uh, pretty decent. I'd say about 35% through the game. It's a very time consuming game. Something I'm considering doing a let's play of far in the future, but something I am considering doing a let's play. Alright, now. The Unemployed Ninja 1 and 2. Um, kind of drastic difference, though. It's like, ooh, kind of classy and samurai. Ooh, boobs! Okay, I don't know. Uh, this is a very uh, odd mystery dungeon series. Um, sadly, the company that made it, I believe, went out of business after the second one. So, uh, kind of a bummer, though. Uh, the first one kind of presents itself in a very nicer way. I don't know, just something seems kind of over-sexualized when it comes to the sequels art, but uh, it's a very zany, wacky game. Atlas published them for America. Um, if you like mystery dungeon style games, definitely something worthy of checking out, and there's a giant mountain of DS games collapsing. 
Ace Attorney, Miles Edgeworth Investigation. I have not played this one yet. Uh, something to maybe consider doing a let's play of. Uh, I would like to get Investigations 2 also in Japan since that didn't come out. Uh, which is a shame. Sucks. It's a more mystery kind of game. Uh, lacking more of the courtroom aspects of the Phoenix White series. Lost Magic. A very early DS title. Interesting idea. Ex executed poorly. It's a real-time strategy game. Was was poorly done in balance and such, in my opinion. Naruto Path of the Ninja. It's a RPG of Naruto. There was three of them, and only two of them came to America. I believe it was the first and third, and the second one didn't. Uh, I think this is the first one, I believe. Uh, very odd that we only got two of them, and not all of them. That's kind of strange. Ugh, I get these last ones in the back, and I'll have all the back world done here. Alright. Retro Game Challenge! Which is a shame we didn't get the sequel. XA bought us this delightful compilation of insanity. Um, it's a very bizarre collection of games through time periods and genres. Um, it's very odd. It, it has a platforming, an RPG, a waste um, it has challenges and stuff. It has a very famous guy who does a show in Japan, uh, which you find him quickly is the exact same name. This has a sequel in Japan, didn't come out. Uh, Suppose Week has poor sales. Damn you people! Puzzle Quest! Uh, Puzzle Quest is available on many platforms, but the PSP version has bugs! DS version, though, doesn't look as nice. Does not have that bug! Uh, Puzzle Quest is RPG elements, pretty much exactly like RPG, except combat is bejeweled. And there you go. Dragon Quest Monsters Joker 1. Oh, it's Chocobo Tales. Final Fantasy Fables Chocobo Tales. I, I really don't know what the hell they're doing with Chocobo. Devil Survival, the Inferior version! I really need to get the Superior version! And maybe give this one away, because uh, what's the point of this one since the Superior version has more story? Music Puzzle Goomba Yoko, I mean Goomba DS. Uh, this was oddly available on the DS also, even though it was made in honor of uh, Goompa Yukoi, which, uh, does it mention that in the back? Yeah, the late Goompa Yukoi winner of the GOC 2003 Lifetime Achievement Award and the legend behind some of the game industry's greatest hardware and software successes has his masterpiece of addictive puzzle game brought to life what tr should have truly became a classic. Um, it's an interesting puzzle game, uh, Truthfully, I didn't really get too much into it, but uh, it probably can find it pretty cheap these days. I also just mentioned uh, Devil Survival, which I guess I kind of did gloss over. It's a, a very interesting strategy game in the Shimon Tensei series. Um, it's not the first, however. I believe the first was on the Saturn, I think. And only available in Japan. Um, wasn't very... Well received, if I never quickly. If I never quickly had a lot of controversy over uh, cheap 3D or something. Lunar Knights. The bastard child of Baktai. The sun is always in your hand. Instead of getting the awesome Baktai 3, we would not get and get this shit. This bizarre alternate dimension shit with cameo names and elements of Boktai is just not Boktai to me. I'm sorry. I need some more Boktai in my life. We need Sawyer and the main character of Boktai to be like, Please, the sun! Yeez, book one and two on the DS. Uh, graphically, it looks horrible, to be honest, but it's functional. Uh, I finished book one. Uh, book two, I never finished yet. Uh, the fireplaces in book two are loud for some fucking reason. I have no idea. Lost in Blue, uh, a simulator survival game in the wildlife. Uh, you get lost on island with a chick and you basically uh, gold with getting the hell off of it. So you progressing through the island, figuring out the mysteries and finding a way to get the hell off. 
Never finished it. It's very uh, time oriented. Like uh, if you don't figure it out through a certain amount of time, you lose and got to start over. The Love Rabbits, which sounds dirty. Really dirty. Yeah. This, <laughs> I think it was the sequel, wasn't it? Uh, I'm pretty sure I have the other one somewhere here. Yeah, this is the sequel, Love Rabbits. If I never quickly, this is actually the Japanese title, uh, which uh, was probably changed because of that. And yet, they would use it for the sequel. Um, don't know. I got really far in this. Uh, never finished it. It got pretty hard. <laughs> uh, something I might look into. Deep Labyrinth, I know a game that uh, remote RPGs went over. Um, it's an interesting game. It's only worth a look, in my opinion, because you're definitely getting uh, a pretty decent deal. You're getting two decent games for the price of one, and it's not very expensive. Um, true, one of them's a cell phone port, and the other one's a sequel to the cell phone. But, um, hey, you know, if you're not a big graphics whore, I, I don't see what the problem is. If you are, then I guess it's the problem. Uh, Black Seedrill, The Blade of the Exiled. A very bizarre game. Uh, many people call it a very Chrono Trigger rip-off art style game because it's very reminiscent of Chrono Trigger's art style um, in the gameplay. Um, hell, almost everything is. <laughs> uh, it has a very uh, interesting story. I never got too far into it. Um, it's sadly whittled with a number of bugs. None of the bugs ever bothered me. Uh, I only ran into one freezing bug. But uh, it does have bugs, many bugs that people have reported. Uh, something I have been considering doing a lot to play of. Contact, a game by Suda51. It was his first RPG. A lot of people were expecting it to be earthbound quality, but it didn't achieve such standard quality. And Odyssey 2, uh, the Heroes of Legad, in uh, Odyssey 3, The Drowned City. Both uh, first person dungeon crawls. And then, something I got pretty cheap on sale new was the Guitar Hero uh, on Tour's Decade, which I think was the force. And I guess uh, I will stand corrected because I forgot this one is also played sideways. Uh, so, okay, so so maybe there was one other game I now know. I guess it's not exactly the force that comes to my mind. Screw you. So we got lots of other games. 999. 9 hours, 9 9 doors. Awesome visual novel. Buy it. So, so go get this game. Um, sadly, Power People did not get this game, which is a shame because they did get the sequel, which we're going to get there. Um, import this. It's still available. You can still get new copies, and Access still sells them. Um, it's not hard to get. You can buy this new still for a reasonable price. So, if you're interested in this, the sequel, or played the sequel and interested in it, check it out. You're not limited, as long as you're not using it. Because Van Portrait Ruin. Uh, aside from the art style, it was a pretty good entry. Uh, connections to uh, Bloodlines on the Genesis, which was a bit odd. I guess this was their way of trying to actually explain how the fuck Bloodlines had anything to do with the fucking storyline. But um, the art style just did not... It very cutesy anime art style. It's just ugh to me. I mean, I really like the more dark look. And sadly, it wasn't the first one to start that. That was Dawn of Sorrow. Um, sequel to the Game Boy Advance game, which did have the dark style, which was weird for him to go to this cutesy anime look again. Not very fitting for Castlevania, in my opinion. Um, personally, I like the original story uh, of this game. Uh, the DS sequel to it, uh, story, especially the Alton ending crap, uh, was kind of a thing to me. I mean... But that's a different story. Dragon Quest Nine Sentinels of the Stray Sky. Um, not my favorite, that's for sure. Possibly one of my least favorite Dragon Quest games. It has a strong battle, but I just didn't like the story. And 
to be honest, Dragon Quest games aren't known for a very good story. I mean, they 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 have there are some with really good stories, eight and four and five and three are some of my favorite uh, stories in Dragon Quest. But um, I don't know. I just never really got into the story. You mentioned angels, and it just seems to fall loose. Now, it was a fun game. It was a really fun game. Dragon Quest Heroes Rocket Slime. I love this game. It is a action platformer. It's very simple, though. Um, if you hate platformers, I recommend getting this game still. It's silly. It's funny. It's not incredibly difficult. And it has fun battle tank things where you throw objects at another tank. You can evade the tank and stuff here. You can see a picture of it right there. It is... It's hilarious. I love this. And it was one of the first games Squire Enix uh, made upon merging that had a lot of, lot of Final Fantasy in Enix uh, references. Uh, there's a character named Sid. There's a tank that's based off uh, a Final Fantasy sword, if I remember correctly. And, uh, and there's nice references both ways. And there's obviously more Dragon Quest since it's a Dragon Quest entry. Uh, this was a sequel to a Game Boy Advance game, which I also haven't beaten. Um, both Fantastic games. I recommend them. I will do, I will do, I will do. At now, Odyssey 1, I finished that. It was a long process to finish that. I've been considering playing the sequel uh, relatively sometime, perhaps. I'm willing to play a PSP game first. Now, here's the first entry of Love Rabbits. You know, I'm kind of wondering how the fuck they got away with these covers and titles. But this one's called Feel the Magic, but it has a very sexualized cover. I mean, <laughs> this one I actually finished, and, uh, Actually, I didn't really explain what they were, did I? Uh, they're a bunch of fucking minigames. Tons of zany fucking weird minigames. Japanese weird minigames. That's all you need to know. Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. Probably one of the last really freaking kick-ass games Capcom has done. Uh, this game was by the creator of Phoenix Wright. It's awesome. Awesome. It's a very visual novel point quick style game where you play as a dead guy who can interact with objects and he can revolt backwards in people's dead people's lives if they're recently deceased and alter their fate. You save people to figure out your own death. It has a very bizarre and twisted end. Highly recommend buy this fucking game. If it didn't come out, pal, recommended. Put it on your import list. Get it. Now, if you ever see copies of this, bullet it, bullet it. One of my most viewed videos in my entire main channel's lifespan will always be the horrible camera shitty quality of me being pissed angry video game nerd style of Lunar Dragon Song. Any hardcore Lunar fan, Lunar fan, you know, this, or this, or even, doo -doo 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 -doo. I think my one's on my big shelf, so I won't be able to show that, or this, I mean, yeah, I think Lunar 1's on my shelf up there, so, on the Sega CD, guys. We'll probably agree that it's a horrible, horrible, evil thing of quality compared to all its previous titles. Actually, I, considering I've never played the GBA version, but that was always considered the most horrible entry. Or a, not only simply the worst version of the first game, but worst game in the series. Oh, and I also have uh, the uh, Magical School thing. Uh, where are you, Magical School? I know I have you. I feel. Who know our Magical School on the Sega Saturn? Ooh. But uh, this game, very poor. Very poor. But I will be very nice that over the many years that video has existed, they're all fans of this game. And they were very pissed and angry and hateful. And I've actually considered doing a video completely devoted to we doing... Because that video was very angry style. Like, it was... 
Very angry video game note. I was being very odd as fucking shit! Okay. But, I thought about doing a much more nicer, professional, in the style I've been doing new video of this game. And also commenting about every single comment I ever got on that video. My reasons, my thoughts, and whether I think your justification is decent or not. And these are just all opinions, you know. Don't freak out be like, I need a more of you. I mean, it's fine if you like the game. That's fine. No need to kill people. But I don't like it, so I'm sorry. Elite Beat Agents. Do, do, do. Elite Beat Agents was born from the strange strangeness of people importing read on one in hey where, where's the other one here hey oh there it is hold on one and hold on two and i might be pronouncing that wrong if i never quite it's like hold on okay that um these are musical games using the touch screen uh, basically, on the top screen, you get action. On the bottom screen, you get little uh, things you have to click and spin and turn and move around with and that. Um, they're very excellent games. Uh, personally, I prefer the Japanese games over the Elite Beat Agents, which was actually uh, made in between these two. Because apparently, Nintendo knows a lot of people in America importing and recommending this game. So, they actually... Uh, hired the people who made it to make Elite B Agents with American songs in it. Well, not a horrible one, I didn't really get into the music. Uh, personally, you know, I like the music in this. Especially the last stage in this uses the Full Metal Alchemist song. Wa -na 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 -na. Okay, but a uh, very excellent song. Uh, the sequel was awesome too. Very highly recommend check out. Now, this was originally a cell phone game. I got this from Alan, because he was going to get with it, and I was like, hmm. Orcs and Elves. It was a cell phone game uh, we done for the DS. Um, it's a first-person, real-time uh, kind of affair with RPG elements thrown in. Um, it was, uh, if I remember quickly, yeah, for the Quails of Doom RPG on the uh, cell phone. I believe it used the same engine. This actually has a sequel, but it's only on the cell phone. Uh, kind of an interesting entry. Um, it's an interesting game. Uh, it's not very expensive, as far as I'm aware. So, uh, I recommend picking it up if you're looking for something in that kind of case. Then, of course, we have... Might as well just get all four. What could there possibly be four of if you're going to count investigations also making it five? And then there's two making it six. Now it's starting to get kind of long. The Phoenix White Trilogy. This doesn't exist. <laughs> okay, anyway. Phoenix White 1, which was just Phoenix White Ace Attorney, which uh, featured a nice back with huge objection boobs. Okay. Then you had the sequel, Justice for All, which had more objections. And of course, you had the third one, which was uh, Trials and Tribulations with Evil Darth Vader. And then you had this not very big Apollo Justice fan. Mainly because it does, you know, to me, it feels like as the series grew, the timeline made less sense. The new case in the DS version that didn't exist in the. Um, Original GBA version, which these were GBA games. Apollo Justice was the first official game for the DS. Um, the fifth case, however, in the first game was uh, made to basically demo what they could would do with the DS for this game. But uh, the timeline seemed to got more and more confusing, in my opinion, especially in this and so much in this. Personally, I'm a big fan of the second one. Uh, I liked the story in the first and second one a lot. Third one wasn't too bad. Paul's Justice is bad. Good luck for Phoenix White 4. I hope lots of luck into that. Next is, of course, more trilogies. More, more, more trilogies. And by trilogies, I mean four titles and not three. Professor Layton, the Curious Village. 
The Diabolical Box, my favorite, by the way. I love the story and the ending in this game. The Unwound Future, my least favorite when it comes to the story. But still a good entry, just... Just my opinion, just my opinion. And then, of course, what started the new trilogy of three games, The Last Spectre, um, with its second entry in this trilogy on the 3DS, and I still haven't fucking got that yet. I really do need to get that. Uh, in case you're not well, the uh, Professor Lane games are puzzle games with an interesting story. It's very much about the puzzles and the story. It's a very fun game, mystery, trying to figure out what's going on in the story. Why well, brain teasing you with puzzles, puzzles, puzzles. If you don't like puzzles, you're not going to like Professor Lane as much. But I certainly do like Diabolical Box. I highly recommend the Italian series. Everything, even the 3DS game, even though I haven't played it. I have that much confidence. If you do full freaking titles and still have not really wavered in quality, even though I consider them my own future of my least favorite out of the four so far, it always had nice improvements every single sequel. It's just the story I wasn't too wild about. Middle Slug 7 with holographic cover! Uh, Metal Slug 7 uh, is a return of SNK doing its franchise. Um, but never quickly, 5 and 6 were made by the company that purchased all the SNK crap when they went out of business. I think, if I never quickly. I know there's one of them, at least one of them, that was made by the company that bought all the SNK properties when they went out of business. And then, you know, SNK came back, bought the ship back, you know, all that crap. Seven is return of their formula on the DS. And, uh, does it have two players? I can't remember. Um, no, I think it is actually single player. Uh, it's not showing a player thing on it. Um, I do think it was single player. I think the PSP version, this did come out on the PSP much later. I think the PSP version does have co-op, though. Uh, not 100% sure. Um, pretty faithful to, uh, Metal Slug, to be honest. Uh, it's a good entry. The lack of co-op obviously holds. No! Here's another one. Probably the second used title I ever got on the DS. Real Time Conflict, Shungen Empires. By Namco. Namco. Um, this is another real time strategy game. And at least I can give this thing some quit. You can't fail at this fucking game like Lost Magic. Um, this game is way fucking abusive, easy as shit. It was an interesting idea. Very poorly carried out. Maybe Koei should try their own flick to this. And on to the very few 3 ds titles I have. I have very, very, very few. So let's move on. I tell you, Odyssey 4, uh, Legends of the Titan. I haven't gotten to play that yet. Shifting Worlds, my first 3 ds title I got. Fire Emblem Awakening. Shimon Tensei Soul Hackles. Dr. Lutrek in the Forgotten Knights. A puzzle solving adventure. And then, we also have Virtue's Last Reward, the sequel to 999. Hopefully we get a third game here soon, please. Yes, I know there's a third game being made all way, but get it out all way. And Final Fantasy Oidon Edition. What? That's basically what it is. It plays the same way. It has the touchscreen interactiveness of it. I mean, really, it's Oidon with Final Fantasy. I mean, uh, it's a good game, though. Um pissed a lot of people off. It didn't have all the DLC uh, on the cartridge and to be honest, I don't know how big, how much space is on a 3DS cartridge. I, I am aware of there are two sizes because specifically, uh, I'm aware of that because of Virtue's Last Reward. Um, Axis Game uh, got the bigger one so it could have the English and Japanese dub. Why uh, the PAL publisher um, I think Rising Star did the PAL version, uh, did not get the bigger cartridge and got the normal cartridge for only the Japanese track and not a English dub. Uh, the English dub is only unique for the American version, as far as I'm aware of. Um, 
Probably because uh, they would have either had to pay access money, because I'm assuming they did the dub, uh, though I'm not 100% sure. But since this is all in the access version, that seems to be the appropriate thing to assume. But anyway, I don't know if there was enough space for all those songs. That's probably the excuse they used. It has a pretty decent amount of songs in, on the cartridge, so... I I wasn't really disappointed. It had a pretty nice number of all the memorable songs. Um, it is a bit of shame with a few. I mean, obviously there was going to be a few. It's like, oh, I wish that one was on here or that. I mean, it's it's very you know this. There is only so much space, so it it could be the legitimate argument. But it's a good title to look into. Uh, I really do want to get Cave Story on the 3DS. I just I want to get a new copy. I don't want a whipped up shit copy of that. <laughs> that's something I've been wanting to get. And there you go. All my DS games. Or well, I'm pretty sure that's all of them. I tried to make sure I scrounged them all. But uh, there you go. That turned out to be a whole lot, didn't it? And that was 55 minutes. Ow, that's pretty long. Well, I hope you people who wanted this all happy. And I hope you enjoyed every freaking minute of it. Because if you did, Dr. Trek's going to go in your act. And he's going to go and steal your soul and be like, Mwah! Okay. <laughs> if you got any questions or anything about any of the games in this video, feel free to leave a comment. Or any suggestions or anything. You know, I love suggestions. I love hearing your thoughts. It's try to keep it nice, though. I don't prefer people bickering and wanting to kill each other. I don't like that too much. Try to keep it civilized and always be a sun bro. Praise the sun. You know, I what I would not do for a cosplay of Sawyer. Anyway, till next time.